Hello, football family. Welcome into Huddle It Up Films. Great day today. Got to see the Panthers and Ravens practice. Mostly it was the Ravens offense. And it's all thanks to the man who should be standing next to me, but uh, is in the in the dark over there. And that's Mr. Garnett West, proud member of the flock. Garnett, how you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great, Jason, man. Thank you for having me on, man. And uh, hey, I was too, I want to say thank uh, Rashad and his uh, YouTube channel for posting that up. I've been following his channel for quite some time just because of our uh, connection between lunch break, hot take. And uh, yeah, man, thank you for having me on once again, though. You're so welcome. I'm going to put Rashad's stuff down there. But uh, basically, this man put a tri took a tripod to Panthers practice, joint practice between them and the Ravens. It was kind of far away. Sometimes it was kind of grainy, but we could tell what was going on, Garnett. And it was kind of the same themes repeating over and over again. So I had to bring Garnett on, and I really appreciate you coming on sh such a short notice to talk about this because we were in the stream together talking. Then we were back on Twitter reporting it. It was just like so much fun, and it came out of the blue, and I would have never seen it uh, uh, aside from you posting that tweet. So that was great. Um, but, hey, Garnett, there was a, uh, a star at practice today, and uh, someone that uh, if you know me at all, which you do, know how high I am on them. Can you just tell me who the uh, the star of the day was and what, what was happening over there? Absolutely. Your boy. You know, you're the number one A1 fan club uh, subscriber to uh, James Prostate the second, which he likes to be called. And he, uh, he showed out today, which is, you know, in all honesty, we shouldn't be shocked when the opportunity arrives. He does come through clutch moments always. And uh, he did a great job today. You know, underneath work was excellent. And then uh, I'll let you, you know, bring it home with the, the seam route that he did, which was beautiful as well. But, yeah, man, he did a great job. And it was funny uh, because the, the uh, Rashad didn't know uh, who he was. So what what was he saying in there? He was saying, <laughs> He's doing the, the, the classic coach. Hey, who's that number 11? And it was right. the most beautiful thing in the world. And uh, the fact that. Right when he said that, the first person I thought about was you. And then here you go, James Prochet with exclamation marks. You know, yeah. he's about 10 of them. I was like, man, I was so happy for you, bro. Yeah, I had oh, – thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, I had to put the exclamation points in there. Just, uh, you know, I, I – you know, Garnett, very rarely – I can't really, really remember any time where I felt this strongly about someone that was drafted in the sixth round. And the fact that we got him, um, you know, I just – you know, it's it's kind of like half emotion, but I, it's it's mostly uh, just my belief in him as a player and a person. And you you could see that. I mean, he caught the ball. Uh, the first the first catch that I noted was he was twisting, turning. It was a contested catch, and of course, they're not really going one hundred percent at the catch point. So there is some lead way. It's where everybody says, "Well, wait till they get in pads." But uh, let me tell you, there's not too many people uh, on this team, maybe not in the NFL, who could have made a catch like that. And then the big seam uh, catch, the big catch up the seam. What did you see on that, Garnet? It was uh, the, from the Panthers' coverage they've been having the whole time. It was like they was playing like eight yards off, eight yards, eight yards off, and just playing like a little. Deep, well, I want to say like a deep cover zone the whole time. The, the whole time of practice, and we kept on hitting them underneath. And for what it looked like, they the Panthers just got complacent. Uh, Huntley saw it. Hall saw uh, Prochet right down the seam and threaded it, and Prochet, um, Prochet did what was expected, and it was beautiful. That's what I that's what I saw. Uh, what did you take from it? Uh, the same thing, but the the thing that really struck me, Garnett, was the uh, the roar of the sideline. Like it really brought me back. I felt like I was in football practice again. It seemed like everybody on both sideline had that, like they were showing the emotion, and you could he just hear that oh go over the crowd. Yeah. And it right. was it was like the third or fourth time that he had made a catch, uh, not quite of that magnitude, but they were all important and noticeable catches in traffic. I mean, the cornerbacks are still slapping at their hands. It's not like it's right. totally uncontested. But uh, again, there was no contact. He caught one over the middle that uh, I, the Panthers guy Rashad mm -hmm. was like, "Oh, he would have got blown up on that and this and that." So some of it is hard to tell. But once again, the guy catching the most passes at practice. Is James Prochet, and uh, you know there were some other practice observations. I'm sure we both had. What else comes to your mind? Uh, the, the the Mariner kid, uh, number 26. Uh, right after I would like to say Miles Boykin got hurt, 
we signed him. He was a last minute add on. And I'm, I just remember the first day he showed on the field, he showed flashes immediately on the deep ball. So I was like, all right, well, maybe, you know, that wasn't a, hopefully it's not a one time deal, you know. And then now we saw it today. And it was the same thing where he's just showing flashing success again. And then when I saw Keith Williams walking down the field with him, just talking to him, I'm like, man, you know, he's having a positive day and he's talking to him like that. So I'm thinking like, okay, he sees something in this guy and hopefully he can stay around either on practice squad or maybe he might earn a spot on the team due to all the injuries. Yeah, it's, it's true. And, um, you know, it, it confused Rashad, the Panthers guy too, uh, because who's this 26 he was thought it was Dobbins, I think, at one point because he has a running back's number on the back of his jersey. But right. uh, the thing that struck me about him, uh, Garnett, was he was making catches of all to- of all kinds, which is something I look for in receivers. It wasn't just little short passes. He was doing crossers. It was a, a deep pass, like you mentioned. I think uh, uh, stop routes. I mean, this guy this guy caught his share of balls too. And um, a lot of times we couldn't tell the number. And of course. Rashad is covering it for the Panthers, so it wasn't like watching the home broadcast. But, uh, yeah, over and over again, it was Prochet and then Mariner. And then, um, yeah, it was a who's 26, but I didn't respond as passionately on that one. I just said Mariner. He just he just was basically on the team for about a week and a half or whatever it was due to the wide receiver injuries. But, yeah, interesting point because the back of that, uh, you know, you talk about practice squad especially, it's they're going to have quite a choice, I would think, between – uh, Benjamin Victor, Jalen Moore, who's done well. Uh, a lot of choices there. Deion Kane, who they like, has been hurt. So there's an opportunity there. Absolutely. And uh, it's, open, it's an open season at the wide receiver position. And it's it's crazy. Like, when the last time you ever said or you ever told yourself or said out loud, man, the receiving core of the, right, of the Ravens is deep and loaded. Like, this is like a weird thing to have in Baltimore for now. It really is. It really is. But one thing is hindering that, and it was obvious in this practice, and that was the offensive line again. And uh, I, it was just frustrating because uh, there was no time to do anything for whoever the quarterback was. A lot of times we couldn't tell if it was Lamar or Huntley because they were kind of far away. But um, I, I counted three sacks, which is just unacceptable in an 11-on-11 drill. Um, so how concerned are you about the offensive line? And do you think we're going to be okay when everybody comes back? I guess I should mention first, Garnett, uh, Stanley was not practicing. I saw Zeitler in there, but I don't think he did a lot. So it was much of the same group we saw Saturday against the Saints. But uh, how, what's your concern level? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll say a 7. And that 7 could easily become a 4 due to just everybody coming back. Or that it can be, it can go up to a nine if you know, if you know, say if everybody gets back and then get hurt, or nobody really, you know, if we rush people back. And the one, I'm, my biggest concern is uh, just rushing people back and um, not getting pushed straight up. back, getting pushed straight back in the pocket. It, exactly, and that, and that's the biggest thing about it is. Uh, you've talked about it multiple times with Tyree Phillips, and I've always had your back on it, and I'm because I'm right there with you. We see eye eye on it. I feel sorry for the poor kid because the fact that he's being thrust at two different positions and f- forced to learn two different positions at the same time due to the whole Stanley's health issue. And the thing about it, what frustrates me the most about that as well, is that we have four guards, potential left guards. And you mean to tell me that Phillips is basically better than all four guys in that competition, which I do understand Cleveland is hurt or had a concussion. So I'm, they're not trying to rush him back. But the other three guys, it's like, you mean to tell me that Phillips is out playing them, all three of those guys? And so that just brings me like at a flux. It's like, dang, if Stanley gets hurt and we already have Tyree Phillips at guard, so who's really going to be the backup tackle? Or are we going to be doing the whole flip-flop stuff like we did last year with Fluker and Phillips? Yeah, and it's it's so unfair to him. It's so unfair to him. Um, and you, you have to, you know, this is an investment, a third-round pick. You expect those guys to play and fill a role. And especially when you take someone as talented as Phillips, you want to make sure that his development is, is right. And really, Garnett, at this point, it's three positions. 
It's left guard and both tackle spots. So he really hasn't got a chance to settle in anywhere. I couldn't tell you where he's going to be starting uh, Saturday night. I guess he's going to be back at left tackle when in actuality with Villanueva and Stanley, he'll probably never see action at left tackle this season. Right. And, so, and, the, and the, Yeah, my bad. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, so we're playing him at a spot he's never going to see. You know what I mean? Like, uh, right. where, where, where's, the, where's the plan here other than to be able to run the offense? And we had trouble doing that uh, with the guys that we had. Absolutely. And it just sort of reminds me of like last year, if you uh, think about it, what, what I already said about the whole the Phillips and the Fluker, like how Fluker would start the beginning of the game, then halfway he'll get pulled, and then here comes Phillips and he'll take over, and he just vice versa. But the fact that uh, it, it just gets back to just the fundamentals, like, hey, what are we trying to do with these guys? Like just, you know, I feel like we're, instead of doing a crawl, walk, crawl, walk, run phase with uh, Phillips, it's like, He's literally putting in a sprint position at every position where he goes to, which I feel sorry for him. Yes, and with the left guards that we have, uh, that was the most disapp disappointing part of Saturday for me was that you have guys who have played, who have started in the NFL, who are on their rookie contracts, but they're, I call them veterans because they've been in Greg Roman's system. We're talking about Ben Powers. I'm talking about McC McCary specifically, um, who were just Saturday night, their performance was uh, – you know, I, I want to soften it, but it was it was unacceptable for what I expected. I expected them to at least hold their own and, and have us uh, be able to run the offense like we saw them do before. I mean, it's not like they're unproven players. So, um, you know, having having the need for uh, so many positions on the line is really stunning Phillips' development. But I, I have a feeling, Garnett, that the Ravens are just banking on having Villanueva and Stanley ready to go uh, week one and just see where Tyree fits in. Maybe he's the best left guard on the team. Yeah. Right. And and that's, if you truly, uh, that's what I was thinking about. So if you uh, think about last year, we're in the same situation as last year when it came to the whole tackle situation as well, where we literally depended on, you know, Stanley and uh, Zeus Jr. Orlando Brown to stay healthy. And then when Stanley got hurt, that really caused a whole situation where it seems like nobody had an idea of what was what was going to happen after that. What do you think about that, sir? No, I, I agree. I agree. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping Ben Cleveland can be the answer here. I think that he could solve a lot of problems if he came in and was just rock solid, effective, and, and Harbaugh gave him the go ahead as a rookie to start the season because that would just really allow Tyree Phillips to concentrate at one position, which would be right tackle because you have Villanueva who spent his entire career at left tackle. So uh, if either one of him or Stanley went down, Phillips would be the right tackle. So I'm just, I'm a little peeved about this situation. And, you know, I, I don't think there's anything, I see a lot on Twitter, Garnett, I'm sure you do too, of trading for a right tackle, but easier said than done. Good luck tr trading some, for somebody that's better than Phillips at this point. Right, absolutely. Like uh, I know, as speaking of the the Panthers, they just got rid of. Uh, I'm gonna say got rid of them. They traded uh, Greg Little. I forgot what team. I think made it was that. the Dolphins. I think the it was Dolphins. The, yeah, for a six or seven round pick, which is like I, I don't know how good Greg Little has been for the uh, for the Panthers, but for a six or seven, I guess it couldn't have been his his performance has not been that stellar. I'm assuming, or or some some so, somewhat or whatever, but. I mean, I don't have, you know, I, EDC can do, you know, I believe in EDC, you know, I think he can make something happen, but I just want people to understand, like, you know, bringing in a lineman this late into this, you know, into right now when the season's about to start, uh, you can, it's hard to find a plug and play player like that. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, uh, it's, yeah. it's really hard to do that this late of the season. What do you think? It sure is, especially a tackle. I mean, their teams aren't, overloaded to tackle it's tough to find good ones so like i said it's not that we couldn't trade a sixth or a seventh for a tackle but to get a true upgrade and just uh spend the trade resources for a true upgrade to sit on the bench that doesn't make much sense if you have villanueva and stanley so i i, I kind of feel like the trade is uh like we might add somebody but it's not going to significantly upgrade uh what we have in phillips if we just left them alone there and and just had them take the same sets every practice and worked on the mental part of the game. So, because it's, it's physically there for him. He just needs to get some mental practice. And, and uh, like I said, I, I don't like to see 
uh, him referred to as a player that doesn't have a high IQ when it comes to football because the man's just been asked to do a little bit of everything since he's been here. He didn't even have a defined role coming into the season. It didn't seem like he was playing at different spots as early as OTAs. So just definitely a pet peeve of mine there. Um, but, yeah, uh, Derek Wolf wanted to also mention, was banged up. Uh, he was on the ground for a little bit but got up, walked off. The guy from the Panthers, I couldn't see it. I don't know if you could, but he said, oh, he's walking fine. He looks fine. So hopefully everything's okay with Derek. Um, but other than that, it seemed like a pretty healthy practice. We didn't get any word of anything else at this point. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing. Like, it's all about health. Health is wealth. I've been, you know, there was a couple things that uh, I'm living by for this year, the three worst. Health, consistency, and execution. So I guess health, execution, and consistency. And, uh, you know, a lot, health is wealth, as like I just said. And when it comes to that uh, interior front of that defense, it's all about staying healthy. You know, uh, you know, a lot of people are, you know, wants to see a lot of the see the sack number go up from 29 from last year of, of having 29 sacks. And uh, for, you know, a nice rotation to have to, to happen, we need to have everybody healthy on the line. And that's, you know, simple, simple as that. Yeah, I feel pretty good about the depth of this team overall, especially when you look at the defensive side of the ball. I think we're, you know, think about last year if uh, Clark or Elliott got hurt, we would have been in some major trouble on the back end. We kind of lucked out with that. Um, you know, we were thin there like we were at tackle. But uh, one thing I noticed, and I wanted you to back me up, comment, counter argue, uh, whatever you have, is that when we were running these drills, uh, there were different portions. And during the full 11 on 11, uh, where it was just a basic 11 on 11, that we were very inconsistent getting open. I counted two or three sacks. Guys weren't getting open. Lamar had to scramble. The only thing we were completing was the quick stuff underneath. Uh, but when it went to the two-minute drill in the red zone, which was more fast-paced, of course, the ball was coming out quick. We were very, very effective in that scheme, which leads me to believe, Garnett, that it really is all about the offensive line. Absolutely. The most vital part of our success on the offense is the offensive line. Everything starts in the trenches and everything's going to end in the trenches. Uh, you were you hit a spot, spot on with the 11 on 11 when it comes to the, uh, you know, the pressure, the pressure, you know, which messed up the timing. And then the routes, you know, people are just not getting open. Uh, everything they like I said, the Panthers played all off coverage, but they knew exactly who to key on, what to look for, what to expect. And when it came to the seven on seven or the two minute drill, I should say, when the up tempo came about, it, it it gave us an advantage due to how fast our team is actually is, and it took the pressure off the offensive line, and and, and it, it alleviated the pressure basically. And so I completely agree with you on that start. Yes, it looked like the second half of the Colts game, if you guys remember that from last year. Where we Amen. Just, came out and just got the ball out of Lamar's hands, you know, within two seconds the whole time. Saw somebody on Twitter say, well, does this mean we're going to a Steelers-style offense of last year? <laughs> and, boy, I hope not because we sure could use some big plays in there. Like, we we have, we have the speed for it. We have Hollywood. We have Andrews up the seam. Crochet's making plays up the seam. We have Duvernay. I mean, we, we have a pretty fast team. J.K.'s really fast, too. And, by the way, J.K. in the passing game, we couldn't always tell if it was him. But our backs were catching a ton of passes, and they weren't uh, – I don't want people to think uh, that they were emergency dump-off passes. They were designed uh, little wheel routes and little screen passes to the outside, um, just basically uh, running back screen – like uh, not even a timing screen. can't think of the word that I'm, that I'm trying to use. I, I typed it. But, uh, but, yeah, just yeah. off the snap, they're putting the running back out there, first read to the running back. Yep, so a little swing passes, but then around. Yes, sir. It, it was just one of those things where it was just it was just perfect uh, design. It was by design, if you look at it. Like uh, as soon as the quarterback did a three or four to a three to five step, seven drop step back, and then the thing he did was just look down the field and immediately whipped his head to the right or left and just dropped it off. It was straight design for those, which I was not worried for those. It was just when it comes to the actual like. Plays that were going from mid to deep, deep passes. That's when I was worried. But everything, when it comes to the backfield, was was perfect. They was they didn't. Did you even see a drop out there, Jason, from the not, running backs? Not re no, from the running backs, definitely not. There were a couple of 
you know, from another passes. But yeah, I, I can't believe I couldn't think of swing pass, but that's what it was. Yeah, just a little swing pass outside. And I tell you what, like that, that really gets me excited com- considering the moves that JK specifically has and the fact that our wide receivers will block. I mean, they're trained to block. It's not just a afterthought. It's a, it's kind of a mentality around here. Speaking of which, something I found really interesting at the beginning of the practice was our wide receivers were running a drill and basically they were swinging in and out of the dummies, running at coach T and then making a cut. And the Panthers, uh, Rashad was mentioning how just awesome that drill was. Oh, look at that drill. That drill is dope. So he didn't know about the new additions, I don't think, of Coach Martin and Coach Williams. But uh, it stood out to him as just a, an unbiased uh, unbiased person to how awesome those drills were that we were running. And it's a beautiful thing. And like, I don't like, – did, when did you join the stream? That's why I want to figure this out real quick. It, pr- pretty much as soon as you posted it. So I think oh. it was like your – it was like the individual drills. So our wide receivers were running, you know, just running their the drills you see every day in training camp. Awesome. So I think I, I should have posted a little bit earlier, but the fact that you would have caught his whole emotional greetings to our uh, – our, just how we do everything in Baltimore – yeah. And he's like, man, these guys look super professional. Like it's like he was just mind blown from the beginning to end. Like, and it was a beautiful thing. And uh, like like you said, he didn't know who Keith. He's not familiar with Keith Williams and T Martin, and the fact that uh, he he wasn't familiar how we do the, the the I guess the sitting or how we you know sit and try to keep everything looking the same when it comes to route running. Right. It, it, was, it was just a beautiful thing to see reactions like that. So that just shows that we're doing something very positive and very infectious in, ba- in Baltimore, which I love. It, it, it. Dude, I, it, it totally was. I'm sorry I missed the, the Baltimore part. But, yeah, they had basically two dummies standing, and they weaved in and out of both of them and then charged Coach – I think it was Coach Williams. But uh, right. they, they were physical. They almost looked like defensive linemen, how they pound the bag and do a rip move. That's kind of like what our receivers were doing. And um, – they were breaking down three times, like you were saying, sitting in the chair, uh, basically hip sync before they went into the drill. So all the components were there. You had to fight through. You had to do basically break down three times, you know, physically go through the dummies, run towards Coach Williams as fast as you could, cut on a dime in a straight in route and catch the ball. And, uh, man, it, it really kind of like you're a military man. It, it, it almost reminded me of the military because everybody looked the same doing it. Like nobody uniformity. Screamed. It was yes, it was extremely uniform. That's something that I look for in wrestling teams at tournaments because you can tell um, which teams are really well coached. All the wrestlers are different, but you can see the same fundamentals, the same moves, the same stance, and it's just it just it was it stood out as a really well coached unit. So it was really cool getting getting props from the Panthers fan there, and you know who who wasn't expecting that. That was that was really really cool. So uh, yeah, man. It's- it, it makes me so happy. I'm glad you said it because it makes me so happy when you see the drills get performed in the one-on-ones, the seven-on-seven, the 11-on-11s, and then you just hear, who's number 11? Or, dang, that you see you see Sammy Watkins, he just cooked uh, J.C. Horn on that route. It's like one of those things where, and when you watch the routes, it's like what you're seeing they practice on is being performed perfectly and those, you know, scenarios, which is beautiful, man. That's great, man. Yeah, the muscle memory and everything. It's not just yeah. – they, they're practicing the same way every time, all the time. He yes, said, sir. man, anybody that's played sports understands that. Like, it just becomes second nature when you're tired or when you're not. Your muscles just kind of do it. And uh, the other thing that they focused on a number of times, which is I, – I don't know if uh, Rashad is something that was bothering him or if they're just scrutinizing the new quarterbacks, but it made me appreciate Lamar – uh, even more. Now there was a you know a two minute break or what have you in between drills. So they would go individual drills, then the horn would blow, then they would go to seven on sevens for a while, then the horn would blow, then they you know the field goal team would come out, Tucker would be bombing. And each one of these times when there was a break in between sessions, you saw Lamar run out to the center of the Ravens field, Ravens practice section, and he was playing catch with the coaches. I believe Huntley was with him, um, just basically maximizing every opportunity. And I think it was four or five times where the guy panned the camera from Lamar to where Sam Darnold, the Panthers quarterbacks were, and they were just basically standing there laughing, talking to each other, sipping water. So uh, no knock on them because maybe that's the way all teams operate, but Lamar was maximizing every single second he was out there. 
and just seeing it compared to the other team was just it made you proud again. Yeah, it it's like having a kid, and it's like you know you're watching on the sidelines what they do, or you're not put like this. It's like, yeah, it's like having a kid and watching them on the sidelines, and you're so used to watching them, you know, do to just yeah, he's trying to find a ways to get better. That you just hear that that once dad or that one tell, that one dad tell his kid, you see that he's always working. You know right. what I mean? It's like he's not he's not you know you know lollygagging on the sideline. He's trying to find ways to get better. And then also, like we was talking about before the show, is like how we were uh, with the Hollywood. Hollywood is even when he's not working, he's working. Like he was throwing the ball to Hollywood. Hollywood was, uh, you know, getting his steps down, acting like, you know, corner routes in the end zone, just trying to get his feet down. Like those things. Same thing with Huntley. So the one thing that I love about this, um, I'm not anti-Flacco. I hate to break this up. But it's just one of those things where the one things that were people used to Hate, I used to hate it, but it's, you know, whatever. Used to criticize Flacco was, it's like he was just a nine to five guy. But the fact that when you see Lamar, it's like he's like, there's, you, there's, I don't understand how people can hate the kid. I'm just sorry. I hate to be a little bit off topic, but Lamar does everything the right way. He just does. almost does. every, almost everything the right way. And he cares. And, you know, I, I mentioned Huntley being over there with him. So obviously it's, it's a quarterback room thing. And then when you're the leader of the team, it rubs off on everybody. So I'm looking infectious. around, and it's – yes, it's infectious. Thank you for the word. And it's always kind of been a Ravens thing. And You go back to the leaders that we bring in, just leaders upon leaders upon leaders, the Saragusas and the Woodsons and the Shadow Sharps back in the day. you Ray Lewis, you Ed Reed. Well, it wasn't just them. Suggs turned into a leader. Elodie Nada yes, led sir. in his own quiet way. And Quan yes, and Steve Smith, like we're a leadership and a – it's part of our organization that – we pride ourselves on, well, leadership comes in many forms. And let me tell you, there's a reason that the guys love Lamar and will fight for Lamar as hard as it is. It's because he's will fight for every yard on the field. But I saw today with my own eyes, and it was just beautiful to see, he maximizes every single second. So it makes me think, Garnett, maybe you can comment on this. Sometimes I see videos on Instagram, and I think people just do it for the publicity or look at me working. But there's a reason we see so many videos of Lamar working, and that's because that's pretty much what he does. Right, a- absolutely, and that's one hundred percent. Like, I, you know, you know how you know the the term that you see a lot. I think in basketball, ball is life. I right. really do believe that he thinks ball is life for him. It's like he understands that, just like how. Oh man, L- Lamar Proche. It's like when I remember when Proche in the press conference he says like. I'm getting paid to play football, like mm-hmm. a sport. And I think Lamar understands that too. And also, he know he has the whole city of Baltimore on his back. Or, and then, uh, uh, then his own fan base as well, the everybody that loves Lamar. It's like he understands that he represents more than just, you know, football. He represents, you know, where he comes from, what he, you know, his family. He, and that's the one thing I love about this kid. He's very passionate about the game. And he doesn't understand. He's not... He doesn't want to cheat the game. That's the best way to put it. And every second count, every rep count, everything he does, understands it has to be done the right way. Yeah, and I've met a lot of people who have had struggles growing up mentally as far as their maturity of concern. And, you know, I'm in my 40s and everything, but for as young as Lamar is, for him to have that, like, it always strikes me, Garnett, that he has a a long-term view of things. Like, you know, am I going to hurt myself and cost myself a million-dollar contract? Well, you know what's more important? giving my time back to these kids who could be, like he put, doing other stuff that, you know, getting into trouble. Um, You know, he's not worried about that. He knows that, you know, he trusts, you know, quite frankly, he'll say it, you know, he trusts in God, he trusts himself, you know, that things are going to work out. And Prochet mentioned that too. The money is going to be there if I just do things the right way. And um, you just have to really respect um, in, in, you know, being a human being, it's easy to go for the, the instant gratification Lamar sees the big picture, man, and it's like you said, it's it's impossible for me not to root for him. And I see a lot of that in Proche. What kind of stuff have you seen in Proche um, that that lends you to believe that he's like that? Like I have too. I have too. I just want to know what you've seen. So is is this the authenticity? That's the first thing I try to look for in people. And Proche, well, it's just I'll go with the mental makeup, then I go to physical characteristics. Is just the never give up attitude. Really doesn't care what people. You know, say about him, you know, just a very, you know, infectious way of doing business. Like, uh, I'm 
him it's crazy uh him and duvernay are like best friends for what i'm i picked up on and then if you really think about it they're really you don't really hear much on they don't really yep. go on twitter that much quiet guys all about they're they're funny they're funny in their own way but they're serious guys they understand what what's the job that needs to be done and executed properly and that's one thing i love about those two guys man it's just they understand they like the whole term that cop that coaches use or you know you know the coaches they they understand and they get it the whole term that term they get it and I, that's one thing i love about them and they're physically proche is a dog man and that's the one thing that uh a lot of receivers these days are lacking is that dog mentality and i love it it's every catch he he puts 120 percent in every catch he he tries to go for every target that he gets he understands it might be his last or you know he doesn't he understands that he's not going to get that he's not going to get that many opportunities and he's trying to make every rep count that's the best way to put it yeah and um after we drafted him and i got to know him a little bit and started looking up his interviews and you know snooping around on instagram and all that other stuff um i really got to see that but it shows up in his game like i want to trans translate this to what i see on the field evaluation which is what i love to do now, there's, to me, there's only one thing, Garnett, that he does not have at the NFL level that's a plus quality, and that is his pure speed. But right. you look at all the other things, and I'll just go through a few, and there's probably going to be some that I leave out. His foot quickness, check. His selling the route and making every route look the same, that's great. His ball right. skills, great. His hands, best hands in the draft. Uh, his ability to locate and track the ball, not just the ball skills itself. But he will find that, and he will start boxing people out. Check. Can he run a bunch of different routes? He sure can. He has. He played the Z receiver position. So he's used to running all these different routes. And um, so when you have that many plus qualities is why um, I was so high on him in the draft, higher than others. And when we got him in the sixth round. I think we traded back into the draft to get him. Um, right. So I guess what I'm saying is his things that check out on the field, uh, is what makes that mentality possible because a lot of guys are mature. They are determined. They work their butts off, but it's not just that from Proche. I don't want to paint him as this like hard worker, worker bee. Like I think he's a player in this league. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, I guess the, the new terminology that these young guys are using is a, a hardo. I, I just figured this out like a couple months ago. I was like, I was like, all right, what, what's a hardo? It's like just a try harder, a try hard guy. You know, just a worker. I'm like, oh, so that's a hard. All right, whatever. Anyway, okay. so he's, <laughs> so, he's not yeah. there. He's not Yeah, there. he's not. He's not a hard O to me, man. It's just it's one of those guys where this is the problem that we always have. I've, we've been having in Baltimore for for quite some time is utilizing people's specific talents, and I just feel like you know for the for the past two for the past year now for him, we just didn't utilize them. We just you know three targets with the same route three times in a row you really can't really get a, a you know an honest opinion on him or an honest assessment wherever you want to say so like you just said uh, he might not be fast but he can cut on a dime you know quick you know quick in and out of his cuts and it's like it cut on a dime ability all those things great hands you know it's up there he has all the actual great qualities but we just need to figure out how can we use his qualities at his best? And that's what I'm hoping that we do in this next two uh, preseason game, which would be my next question for you, is uh, how would you would like, what would you like to see in this Carolina Panthers game, you know, coming up from the other, uh, just from the office as a whole, as more importantly, just the receiving side of it? Well, I think um, it's kind of funny. Because I'm glad you asked me that because I was thinking, if you remember the Saints game, we had our most success on offense when we did what? We ran up tempo. So yes, sir. I want to see if these guys only get 10, 15 snaps or one or two drives. I'm talking about Stanley probably won't be there, but we could see Zeitler, Villanueva, Bozeman, and either Cleveland or Phillips at left guard. So we'll be almost all the way there. Um, I want to see this offense get in the rhythm and target Prochet early, um, target uh, Duvernay early. And really just pepper this, uh, pepper the team, get into a rhythm, and then maybe take a shot, take the pressure off the O-line, because we cannot waste another preseason game calling plays that are out of the offensive line's capability, which I thought actually Jordan Coe with the Situation Room 
made this point. Jordan, I hope you're listening. You better be because I just gave you a shout out. But uh, <laughs> but he was like, I hate to I hate to knock pre uh, play calling in a preseason game because you don't game plan. He's like, but we're running routes that our line can't block for. And I hadn't thought of that, and he's spot on, and that's why we saw the success uh, when we did go to hurry up. So how about this, Garnett? How about we just start the game with hurry up? Start the game with hurry up and, and take it from there. Oh, my God. Like, dude, dude Brent, uh, Jason, I love you, dude. The reason why I say that is because the fact that that's the same thought I had. Like, this this undefeated record, this streak since 2015 can go out the window for me. I, I really don't care. Like, I said this last night, and I think people were – thought I was joking and I was like dead serious like I l- let it rip like go to a old school 2000s late you know early 2000s Hawaii offense or Texas Tech offense mm-hmm. and just throw the ball like just literally up tempo pass like here's my issue of how we've been doing business with our receivers is the fact that yeah we understand we we mastered the run game like I, I'd have no questions about the run game as long as we have Lamar we know we can run the ball it's right. been proven two years in a row. The qu- biggest question is we spend all the draft capital on these receivers and we're we're not giving them an opportunity. And last year we got robbed due to the whole COVID situation, so we didn't have a preseason. So this is your this is our perfect opportunity to try things out that we're not used to doing. Uh, uh, i.e. up tempo offense. We saw the consistency and execution of the last game when we did it the last quarter and I felt very successful and I saw, I felt very good when I saw, uh, you know, Huntley executed, which was perfect. You know, we, we kept, we kept it going, had the defense being after a while, the defense became complacent and we was, you know, just, you know, d- dotting them, dotting them up and down the field, running the ball. It was a beautiful thing. Just like how you said, bro. Yeah. So that's, that's great. So that's, that would be both Garnett and I are in agreement then. Let's yes, give sir. our offense a chance to function with Lamar behind center. And, hey, you protect Lamar that way too. Let's just get the ball out of his hands, give the receivers a chance to make uh, some make some easy catches, yards after the catch. Let's just get a little rhythm built up with that first team. I don't care if we go three and out three times in a row if that's their you know nine plays that they play. I don't care about the preseason streak either. I mean, it's a nice antidote. and. A, it probably means something as far as us being prepared practice wise and having a deep roster. But I mean, we have bigger fish to fry at this point. So um, Garnett, any kind of final words, any, uh, any other question that you have, whatever you have for me as we wrap it up here. Oh, all right. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, so, you know, I, I would say it's not actually, it's not too early to ask, but since we're on the, rec- the receiving, uh, since we're all in heavy on the receiver questions or just, you know, questionnaire, I should say, who you, how do you think the, uh, the receiver room is going to uh, look in the next two weeks, as in depth-wise? Well, I think as, uh, as Hollywood and Boy can come back to practice, you're going to see it, it may even be um, uh, 26. Shoot, I can't, and I apologize for Mariner. It Mariner, might be it yeah. might be Mariner or Darius or Devin Gray. They might they might uh, the the room will thin out because we won't need all those bodies. But in the end, uh, Garnett, I think we're going to keep six receivers, and I think that those six receivers are very clear at this point. Uh, right. I th- I think the goal should be now to figure out some kind of pecking order for the practice squad. That way, if one of the guys gets picked off of waivers, uh, you know we have you know we can go to our second guy or a third guy receiver depth is all over the place garnett like they're coming out pro ready i don't see a lot of like uh concern that all our receivers are going to get poached because this league is full of wide receivers so uh bateman's going to have to be on the roster because he did practice so he'll have to be on the initial roster before we put him on ir so we'll have bateman hollywood sammy watkins is the three and then of course duvernay wallace and proche that's the six That'll give us plenty of depth. We'll get some special teams in there as well. And uh, we can really save, hopefully save a spot for an extra person on defense with all those safeties that we have. Uh, what's, what's your thoughts? Does Boykin have a chance? What's your stance on Boykin? Give me your Boykin. Uh. Man, that, that thing has went everywhere with Boykin. Uh, I, I was, you know, I used to defend Boykin because, you know, harsh criticism due to just – not you know inconsistencies on his part, and also not really getting him involved frequently. But 
I, I didn't really hear that much from him from camp. Maybe it was the injury. But at the same time, though, I felt like the pressure might be getting to him a little bit due to he understands what's happening. You know, we draft two more receivers, chopping block between – it was him and Prochet that was on the chopping block. And Prochet, you know, o- overcame, I, sh- I guess you can say that. And then Pro- uh, Boykin just he, – he never, you know, showed. Like, and I feel sorry for the guy – I feel that if he would goes to another team, he'll and just gets a, a honest shot. I would not be surprised to see a a Tim Patrick play out of him. I don't know if you if you remember Tim Patrick when he was a Raven. You know, we really didn't give him an opportunity for what it looked like. Then he all of a sudden he goes to Denver. Then he shows that he can compete and be a nice solid number two guy. So I'm hoping the best for Boykin. Uh, hopefully he he comes around maybe. Uh, gets healthy, maybe be able to sh- show out week three, so what he's capable of doing. But I, I'm up in the air for him. I hope the best for him. And I, I tried defending him for quite some time, but it is what it is at this point. I just hope, you know, all you can do is just pray. <laughs> yeah, I, I, have, I have some concerns about how we, we can fits with the room now because uh, if you look at those drills that Coach Keith has him doing, <laughs> I mean, Boykin, when we talked about uniformity, he has real problems when it comes to hip sync and and, and those kind mm. of things. So I think he needs to go to a different system, Garnett, like a yes, completely sir. different system. Like you say, give him a shot. I think he would be best in the slot where he can use his big body. Um, pseudo tight end. I know people like to say tight end, but he's not going to be blocking defensive ends anytime soon. Just get yeah. him in the slot. Let him find open space. Let him use his big catch radius. Um and he has good hands. Uh, like, there are things to like about Boykin, but uh, outside receiver on this team, I, I just don't I don't see it. And then before camp, like you mentioned, I would have gave the edge to Boykin over my favorite player. Like It was paining me that we were going to – I'm like, man, Prochet's going to go somewhere and catch 80 balls. I can see it. Watch, he's going right. to go and be a slot receiver because Boykin is just such a core member of special teams. It's not even about the blocking. It's right. Boykin's on the return teams. He's on – he's your gunner on punt, punt coverage. So, um, you know, best of luck to Miles Boykin. I respect every Ravens player. I don't like some of the terms that were thrown out. I, I don't agree with, I mean, my commenters, you know, respect to you guys too, but, uh, but calling them <laughs> soft, I think is a little unfair. I just think that yeah. he's, his football uh, is, is basically like football receiver. Uh, it looks like he hasn't played the game very long, even though he has like, man, just look for the ball, call for the ball, make your move. Muscle up. I mean, let's go, Miles. Like, sometimes it looks like he's sleepwalking through the game, and that's just a shame, man. Yeah, and then th- just the last part of the caveat off that is just the the fact that, like I said, he – I felt like I felt bad for him because of the fact that he never could get in a, a, a consistent, you know, a rhythm. And, you know, playing as a receiver, it's a rhythm thing. There's, and like you said, it, he just looked like he was just going through the motions at one point in time last year because guess what? He wasn't getting the ball. It was just block, 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 block. Okay, speed out. And, you know, it was just – and the thing about him, we had – you know, being a big guy, all he really didn't get a chance to go vertical whatsoever in our offense on a consistent basis. Actually, he only had one fade route last year, and he didn't even know he was going to get the ball. <laughs> and so it's one of those things where I completely agree. Just let him, just let him go somewhere else, and hopefully, you know, God bless him, man. Yeah, let him go. If we can trade him for something, that that would be great. But overall, it's just not a fit. It's just one of those things where it's not you, it's me. It's just, just go ahead. And, you know, <laughs> you know, you might that might That's not be one. true. That might not be true. But uh, it, you know, you just you just wish him the best. But uh, yeah, Garnett, yes, I, I really appreciate you, sir. Uh, military man. Uh, I like the sir. It brings me back to mom and dad kind of stuff. My dad's from the South. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> born, in, born in 44, so there was a lot of sirs and ma'ams in the house. And I remember telling you that I referred to my mother as she. I said, well, she didn't let me do it. So, uh-huh. Mac, that was the last time <laughs> Last time I called my mother. That is my mother, you know, a she. Yep. So, so, yeah, man, similar upbringing in that, uh, in that respect between us. We can laugh about that. All the abuse, the parental abuse we took as kids, I guess. Oh, discipline. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. I, yeah. I, I toe the line with that kind of stuff. I just talk about football, but you understand, man. You, you know. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, that's the one thing I try to, you know, preach to my kids. It's just, you know, uh, even 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 when you're talking to somebody online that you don't know, like, I try to, treat, I'd like, treat them like they're in front of you and just show them respect at all. Cause you don't want to be disrespected whatsoever. Right. And that's how I always live my life, man.
There you go. There's no better way to close the show than that. That's life advice from Garnett West. You see his uh, Twitter handle down there, Garnett478. I will link Rashad's stuff in here. But, Garnett, thank you so much, and hopefully I can have you back during the season or even before that, and we can talk some more ball. Look for that live practice tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be up to see it. Yes, sir. And also, uh, I'll be at the game on uh, Friday, and uh, hopefully I can get you some uh, All-22 film for my for you, my man. Hopefully I can do some recording for you. All right, man. I, you know, hey, you know my email. You know my yes, DM. Sir. Just I send got, it I all, got man. You. Send it all. all right. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much, football family. Love you guys. We'll talk to you again later. Garnett, say goodbye to people. All right, man. Holla, be safe. God bless y'all and love y'all. Love you, too.